All right, welcome to Discrete Math Lectures. Today we'll be doing Boolean logic. So why logic? Logic provides the, the basis to control uh, the execution of algorithms. It supplies a way to perform computations in a base two number system, and it provides a framework to prove mathematical statements. We'll be doing all of these later on in these lessons. So Boolean algebra was created by George Boole. It is a sub area of algebra where the values of the variables can either be true or false, so 0 or 1. A 1 typically re represents true, and 0 represents false. So, and it has binary operations for conjunction and disjunction. So a conjunction is um, referred to as and, and it's similar to like multiplication in normal algebra. And a disjunction is typically referred to as or, and it's similar to addition. There's also a negation operator, as you can see there, and it is um, right here, and um, it just switches the value of the variable. So if it's true and you put the negation there, it'll be false, and so on. It's similar to a negative sign, and it's typically referred to as not. And there's also an equivalent sign, uh, similar to an equal sign, only that there's three bars instead of um, two. So, uh, now we're going to talk about the conjunction, or AND. So A and B is true if and only if A is true and B is true. So, uh, to illustrate this, I, I made what's called a truth table. It's a table of values uh, to show the result for each combination of inputs. So as you can see here, in this uh, column we have the values of P, in this column we have the values of Q, and in this column, we have the values of P and Q. So note that P and Q is true only when P is true and Q is true. Next, we have our disjunction, or OR. So A or B is equivalent to true if and only if A is true or B is true. So note that when both uh, P and Q are false, right here, P is false, Q is false, then P or Q is false. But for all other cases, since at least one value is true, P or Q evaluates the true. And now we have negation. Negating a variable produces its logical opposite. So not true is false, not false is true. Not A and A is false, obviously, because something can't be true and false at the same time. So that's an important one to remember. And then not A or A is always going to be true because it's either true or not true, which is false, which is tautologically true. And then of course we have our double negation rule. So if we try to take the not of something being negated, it's just going to be the original statement. So here we have some laws that we use in Boolean algebra. So uh, distribution in this first case works just like uh, you would distribute numbers in like a normal math setting. So you can almost think of the and as a time sign and then this or as a plus sign, and then it just distributes normally for this first split point. However, um, this might be a little less intuitive. A or quantity B and C is going to be A or B and A or C. So a little different. You have to remember this one. It's uh, just different. And then associativity and commutivity or commutativity are the same as normal algebra. So you can move the parentheses around. Um, if they have the same sign, and you're all good. And you can switch the orders just fine. So this is De Morgan's Law. This is a little bit different, and it, it illustrates how a negation operation is distributed. So the negation of quantity A and B is going to be equivalent to the negation of A or the negation of B. And similarly, for the uh, disjunction, negation of A or B is going to be equivalent to the negation of A and the negation of B. And if you're having trouble realizing this, just think about, like, okay, how can we make, for instance, for this first bullet point, how can we make A and B false? Well, if A and B is false, then either A is false or B is false, or they're both false. So uh, that's how we come up with this. And it, you can do the similar argument for A or B. So what makes A or B false? Well, A has to be false and B has to be false. Okay, so next we have propositions. 
A Boolean variable typically represents a proposition, and a proposition is a statement which can either be true or false. It's often interpreted as the name for a declarative natural language sentence. So, for example, uh, all humans are mortal is a proposition. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is a proposition. It's a false one, but it's a proposition. And then 2 is an element of the natural numbers. That is also a proposition. So we can do some uh, manipulation of these propositions using propositional calculus. Uh, this is the study of the behavior of formulas constructed using Boolean variables. We can assign propositions to variables and use our Boolean operators to create more complex logical statements or arguments. So for example, if we let P um, equal it is raining and Q equal it is cold outside, then P and Q would represent um, it is raining and it is cold outside. Or if we can also do um, negation of P or Q, that's going to mean that it's not raining and it's cold outside. Or sorry, this should be an or. Let's realize that or. And for the final bullet point, we have the negation of P and Q. So it is not the case that it is raining and it is cold outside. And if you remember from De Morgan's law, this guy right here would be equivalent to not P or not Q. Now we have the conditional operators. Conditional statements bridge from true statement to true statement. Uh, you might have heard of these as like if-then statements or implications. So it's typically represented symbolically by this little arrow here. So P implies Q. So, or in English should be if P then Q. Or if you want to play with the grammar, Q if P. Also, P implies Q. That's a very common one. Q whenever P. Or um, using the material implication, uh, we have not Q or P. You can note from the truth table that these two are logically equivalent right here. So here's our truth table. So again, we have our column for P, column for Q, and then our column for P implies Q. And note that this is only false when P is true and Q is false. So 1 implies 0 is going to be false. Also note that um, if not P, sorry, if P is false, that's definitely always going to be true. And let's say that P is true, then uh, P implies Q is true only when Q is true. So that's how we come up with this not P or Q relationship. So conditional operators are used to create more complex arguments. So P implies Q is an argument. P is the premise and Q is the conclusion. Conditional operators are what we use to make proofs. So some, a common mistake with these is going to be denying the antecedent. You're trying to prove something and um, you're trying to prove like P implies Q. So you do um, not P. So you figure that out. And then you conclude, this should be a not right here, you conclude not Q. And this symbol right here, the three dots, that represents therefore. So here's an example of why this doesn't work. If you live in Los Angeles, then you live in California. If you don't live in Los Angeles, you can still live in California, so negating the fact that you live in Los Angeles doesn't mean that you're not from California. All right, so now we have the biconditional operator, and it can be used to show equivalence. And this is uh, related as a double arrow operator, so two-sided arrow. So P if and only if Q is how you can read this. And um, we can abbreviate if and only if as IFF, just for shorthand. Or we can also um, represent this as Q is necessary and sufficient for P. And it's also the combination of P implies Q and Q implies P. Now we'll look at the truth table here. We have our column for P, Q, and P if and only if Q. And notice that 
Um, these are true only when P and Q are the same, like so. Also, I forgot to mention, um, if you wanted to do like an exclusive OR, which is um, either one variable is true or the other one is true, but not both, you can simply negate P if and only if Q. And that's typically denoted with like a plus sign with a circle around it. So P XOR Q, the exclusive OR, is going to be equivalent to the negation of P if and only if I can draw with a mouse Q like that. So now tying it together, we can use a truth table to determine the outputs of arguments based on a given set of inputs. So we have A and B, and then we have a result C. So for our, first we begin with A, and we begin with B, listed uh, like so. And then we write out the truth table for A implies B, and then we negate it to find C, like so. So if you look at the relationship between these two, every one of these, they're just going to be the opposite because of this negation right here. All right, so that concludes the slideshow. Um, in the next lecture, we're going to be talking a little bit more about this stuff.